Hello, my name is Shelby Vaughn, Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle at 208 Washington Street in Anahuac, Texas. And I want to invite you to tune in and listen to my broadcast, Flames of Revival, on Faith Television Network. You will be blessed. Welcome to Flames of Revival broadcast. This is Shelby Warner. So glad you tuned in. Uh, we've been talking about, I've been talking about making a decision. I told you that everything starts with a decision. Even God Almighty starts everything with a decision, a conversation, and action. Sometimes your action and your conversation is the same. Sometimes they follow each other, but the end result is that's the way it works. So once you understand that I have to decide. You know, a lot of people don't get things done because they haven't decided to. You understand? Uh, they don't, they, they haven't uh, decided to. Uh, and so, you have to make a, decide, uh, um, a decision to decide, and then you got to decide. And I like to say it like this, you need to be on your own side. So that means I need to uh, think till the end. If I make this choice, what's going to happen to me? If I do this, What's the end result of this action? If I jump off this bridge, what's going to happen to me? You understand what I'm saying? If I smoke this reefer, what's going to happen to me? If I go in there with these cats to rob that bank and I get caught, what's going to happen to me? And so you have to decide ahead of time. You understand? Uh, the strongest thing that you have is a will. The devil cannot go over your will. God cannot, will not go over your will. He will not go over your will. All right? So if I'm going to walk with God and work with God, I, I need to decide in the direction of God. So whichever, whichever way God is taking me, that's where I need to go. So I mentioned the original intent, that word, and I said I was going to be using it. Okay, well, let me say something about that again as we go on to this other part. When God says something, he knows what he means. He knows what he wants the end result to be. He knows what he wants done. He knows what he wants you to do. He knows what he means by what he says. And God has the ability to make sure you know what he meant by what he said so there's no excuse for disobedience, for you not obeying the Lord. Okay? And so, <clears throat> this, I think that living for God and being safe, man, it's such a wonderful, wonderful journey. You know, you know, you know what I mean? I wish I could live about three, four thousand years because, you know, I'm, it, it's, this is wonderful. This, <laughs> you know, it's wonderful to me to just sometimes read one scripture and have to stop because I tell you how I think. So my mind goes there. So I'm, I'm in the scripture with him, too. I'm living, too, with him. And it's so real to me. Man, how in the world, where did he get that courage from? Why did, why did David get that courage from that he was going to kill the lot? What, what happened? Ugh, why did he talk so strong? Because he had decided, Goliath, I'm not dying today. You are. He started running toward Goliath. And so what gets people tired and woe out and all of that a lot of times, they don't ever make a decision. And the Bible says in James, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let not that man think he or imagine that he will receive anything from God. So you have to be single-minded. You know what I mean? You can't start building a house and then get ahead. Well, I changed my mind. I mean, you could do that, but it would be silly. Such a waste of time and money and energy and all of that. You understand? So if you start, you need to finish. Whatever, and if you're not going to finish, don't start. Do you understand? And sometimes you got to command you. You got to talk to you. You, that, that's time, you got to talk to you. You got to tell yourself what you're going to do. You, you got to tell you what you're going to do. You understand what I'm saying? You, when I used to waste a lot of money, I said, oh, you know what? You stopping that. That's done. Do you understand? And I'm talking to myself out loud. You're going to stop that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm talking to me. I'm I really am talking to me. Okay. 
All right, why are you wasting that money? Why are you doing all of that? Stop that. You, you need to stop. Do you understand what I'm saying? Stop it. You stop that. You stop it. You understand? Now, you don't need to eat out all the time. Ain't nothing wrong with eating out. You can eat out all you want. But do you really want to eat out or you want to save some money? Okay, well, I want to save some money. Okay, well, what you going to do? And, and it's literally the way I keep Shelby Varner in check. This way I keep Shelby Varner in check. This way I keep Shelby Varner in check. You understand? I talk to me out loud. Come on, man. So what you going to do? All right, come on, man. Hey, man, what you going to do? And that's where I talk. Okay, so, 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 wait, I, I'm, I'm not just talking about me, but I'm trying to show you that whatever works for you, that's what you need to do. Now, Jesus' life is fascinating to me because he didn't do stuff the same way. You know, one time he spit on the ground, made some clay, put it in a man's eye and told him, go wash. <laughs> He could have healed him without the, without the clay if he wanted to. See, you understand? One time he spoke to a tree. And he said, no, and he said to the tree, no more fruit going to grow on you hereafter forever. Got it? So he imagined the tree dead. So he said out his mouth toward the tree, the original intent was to stop you from producing life. When he said the word, he sent his word. Watch, watch. Okay. Ah, I'll go there in a minute. But, but I'll just say this. He sent his word. Okay, the minute is up. I'm there right now. He sent his word and he healed them. All right. Psalm 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and he healed us and delivered us from our destruction. So when he sent the word, he made a decision first. He sent the word with purpose. The word had a purpose. Heal those that believe. Glory. He says the word with the original intent and purpose, faith comes by hearing. So those that hear this word and receive it and imagine it and accept it, faith will come alive in them. And then they'll be able to do exploits in Jesus' name. They'll start manifesting themselves as a son of God because they believe what I said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You understand? And so you can go on these adventures with God. With God. See, a lot of times people, you know, I want this. Th 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 I want this. I, and you can have it. And in it, you can, man, you understand how powerful you could be full of the Holy Ghost and doing the work of God. Laying hands on the sick and casting out devils. Do you understand the authority that you got? But you got to use it. And you got to be convinced that I'm supposed to do this. And it's my destiny and it's my calling. Because God said, Jesus said, go in all the world and preach. Lay hands on the sick, cast out devils. Jesus Christ said that. Okay? So if I'm going to make him happy and I'm going I'm to fulfill my assignment and I say I'm a believer, then I need to talk like one, act like one. So, so watch this. He had an original intent. Now watch. He caught up. He about to go. And he was telling them that I'm getting ready to go. Watch. Watch what he said. Boy, this is so good. He said, I'm getting ready to go. And I want you to go. I'm going home because I finished. You're not home yet. I want you to go in all the world and preach the gospel, but I'm going to be with you. You understand? So then the angel came while standing you gazing up in the heavens, the same Jesus. You saw him go, he could come in back. But, but here's what... Here's, here's what happened. Jesus went to where he was supposed to go. <laughs> and then they went where they were supposed to go. Watch this. His word, decision, the real intent, gave them instructions on what to do as he left. When they started doing what he said because he had left, then what he said was going to happen after they did what he told them to do started happening because he told healing, he told deliverance, whenever they go, go with them. Freedom, go with them. Power, go with them. Do you understand? So 
Even though you might think you, you're alone, you're not alone. You understand? Some of you, God might send you to that hospital and say, go in there and lay hands on them. See, you're not a healer. Once, see, once you understand, you're not the healer. But the intent is for God to work through a body who has authority in the earth to go forth. And that's why what you say is so powerful. That's why, you know, when you pray, what you're doing is so powerful. When you pray, men are always to pray and not to faint because you tap into God. The original intent of prayer is to communicate with God through words. Hallelujah. Glory. And he said, you have not because you ask not. Well, before I ask, he said, ask and you'll receive. So before I ask, I got to decide what I want. And then he said, you know, when you pray, if you believe what you pray for, when you were praying, then you will have. So what, the way I get what I need is through prayer. And sometimes it's through giving or whatever, or, but it's through obedience. It's through obedience. So I have to decide that this is the real way, that the scriptures, that's the, this is the real way. This is the real way to serve God. This is the real way where I'm going to have a good life. This is the real way where I can overcome anything. This is the real, real way where I can put my flesh under. This is the real way where I can submit to God, resist that devil, and he will flee from me. And then say he flee from Jesus, he'll flee, he'll flee from you. It said, you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. You understand? You got power over Satan and demons. He will flee from you. Glory. But you got to believe that he will flee from you. So when you tell him, flee, he got to go. You understand? Okay. Now, going back to this decision. When I first started talking, I was talking about how God created everything. So he decided what he wanted. He decided what he wanted to look like. And, and he decided what he needed to say. So what he wanted to show up came. Man. Whoo. When you get this and you believe it and, you know, because, see, you have to preach to you. You know, I don't care how many preachers preach to you. You have to preach to you. So when your pastor gets through preaching, he preach faith, then that faith he preached will go with you. And it'll still preach to you. You at home. It'll preach to you next week. Sometimes it'll preach to you next month. Sometimes that same sermon that your pastor preached this Sunday will preach to you next year. You know why? Because the word is everlasting. The word is full of power. The word never dies. So when you receive it inside of you, then you carry in the power of the word with you. Glory. Hallelujah. Man, this is so good to me. <laughs> Whoo All right. Now, <clears throat> let me go back to this decision. Okay, let me go back to he, the, the woman with the issue of blood. Then I'm going to still tell you what I said. But the woman with the issue of blood, the woman with the issue of blood, the woman with the issue of blood said, you know, if I touch, I'm going to be made whole. So she did what she said, and she was made whole. Now, she decided that the pathway to her health was through Jesus Christ. Christ. You understand? Evidently she heard that he was a healer. Evidently she heard that he healing people. Evidently. And so she acted on what she heard and then she started saying stuff. Boy, you wait till I get on name and claim. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. You understand? See, that's why you need to know the word first because you can't claim it. You know, and people say, well, you know, if God don't name it, you can't claim it. Well, I'm talking about God and I'm talking about name and claim it from God. When I say name and claim it, all I'm talking about is God. So that goes without saying to me. Okay. But anyway, you have to, you have, you have to get this. This has to be a revelation to you, to you. When I was trying to get healed, when I wanted to get healed and I started seeing that healing was possible, and I started reading them scriptures where it says, you need to go home because the devil is going out of your daughter. Because of what you're saying over here, your words are spirit. And they went in the spirit and they snatched that devil out of your child. 
My, 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 my. Let me tell you something. If you will meditate on this word by making a decision in line with the word and you think it through and you might have to fast and pray, whatever you got to do, and this word becomes your reality and you just start simply obeying the word, not trying to figure out how God going to do it, you just start doing this, you're going to be amazed at how many of your prayers are going to get answered. You, you will be amazed how God will use you to help somebody else. You'll be amazed how you won't feel like you praying and your prayer not doing nothing. Oh no, all that business will go away from you. You will be thoroughly convinced that what you ask for is done. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You will be thoroughly convinced. What if it don't happen? Well, what if it do? See, some stuff you ought to not worry about because you're not even doing it yet. And if you're not doing it yet, what, where the questions come from? What difference? You know, I, I think you ought to see if it works. I, I think you ought to want it to work. I think you ought to be available because God has an original intent. Let me tell you what he said in case. These signs shall follow those that believe. you a believer, right? Well, if you're a believer, signs for to follow you. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. Okay. Glory to God. So, virtue was sent into that lady for her to get healed. All right. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God sent Jesus. Jesus went where he was sent. <laughs> God sent Jesus to do his will. Jesus said, I always do the will of my father. Jesus said, I come to earth, basically, to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So when he came, he knew what his purpose was. Oh, I must needs go through Samaria. So he understood that his assignment at that moment in time on that day was I need to go through Samaria. And that's why the Bible is telling us, you know, in all your ways acknowledge God, he'll direct your path. And so if I'm talking to God every day, decide what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to have and what's supposed to happen and what's supposed to come forth. If I'm doing that every day, well, guess what? I'm going to start knowing what to do because I'm acknowledging God first. I'm telling you, if you will start listening for his spirit, talking into your spirit, and you cultivate a listening ear and a listening heart, you will start knowing some stuff that's coming in the future. And you won't be worrying yourself sick or silly about stuff. Okay, so he sent his word, Psalms 107, and healed them. All right? Uh, he sent the prophet. Let me, let me just do it. He sent the prophet. Go up. Go up by the brook Charity. And I commanded the ravens to feed you there. So the intent at that moment, in that season, in that man of God's life was right now, I don't need you down here. I need you by the brook chariot. So you go there. So, so his word sent, God's word sent the prophet. And then God's word sent the ravens. He said, I, I commanded ravens to feed you. So he went where he was sent. And then the ravens went where they were sent. Mm, you understand? And so all through the Bible, when God sends somebody somewhere or sends something somewhere, he has a original intent. He has a purpose in mind. All right? You understand? Okay. So, uh, this testimony. Two. One. We were having service on a Tuesday night. And this lady was saying that she was concerned about her cousin who lived in another state. I don't know if she's in Maryland or... I don't know where she was. But she wasn't, she wasn't in Anaway. And she said, I want prayer for her. I said, what's the matter? She said, well, she's hiccuping, she's dehydrating, she's losing weight. And, they've been, and, and she can't hardly rest and she's getting weak. And she's been hiccuping for 30 days. I said, what? She said, yeah, they tried to put the bag on her head, scare all that, you know, that they, you heard it work. It didn't work. I said, okay. 
I said, it was on Tuesday night. We was having, you know, I don't have church on Tuesday, but that week we was having revival, whatever. I said, okay, everybody, what time the clock got? 20 minutes to nine on a Tuesday. I said, all right, I speak now. Hiccup, stop in Jesus' name. I said, she's healed. Now, I ain't never saw her. I don't know what she looked like today. And I said, she said, okay, thank you. I said, you believe what I say? She said, I believe. I said, well, she's healed. That's it. You understand? I said, y'all heard? What time? 20 minutes to nine. I said, when it happened, come back and give a testimony. Y'all know what happened, right? Next time we had church, she came back and she said, I called my cousin that night at 11 o'clock. You know, and she said the time, so the time was still the right time. And uh, she called her and she said, well, what happened? She said, I was walking across the floor and suddenly something happened and my hiccup stopped. She said, what did you do? She said, I don't know. Something just, it just jumped out, it quit, it stopped, and I quit hiccuping, I started breathing normal, and I'm feeling better, and I'm, I'm fine. And she said, what time was it? She said, well, I guess she had a text, or text whatever she had, but anyway, she said, I looked at the clock, because something told me to look at the clock. She said it was 20 minutes to nine. Now, now how did that happen? God told me what to do so she could be healed somewhere else. I believe that if we will start getting the mind of God first on how to pray for the sick, what to say, what to do, what not to do, how to handle stuff, we'd save ourselves a lot of time and we would have more success. In every area of your life, you'll start having greater success if you decide that God is smarter than me. I'm not going to try to figure nothing out. I'm going to just obey him. If he don't tell me nothing, I'm going with my own mind. If he tell me something, I'm going to do what he says do, and he's going to be glorified. If you was, everybody heard me. Everybody was there. They heard what I said, and then that's what happened. Okay. And the only reason I need, I need to do that because God sent a word to my spirit to telling me how to handle it, and it... it Judge by results, it works. Okay, now, I got a cousin who's a preacher, pastor of a church right now. And when he was a kid, when he was little, you know, I was, uh, I had an old school TV camera. And I said, you know what, one day, man, you might go on TV with me. So here was a little boy, him and his cousin, and I was teaching him how to sing. You know, I ain't that great, but I was teaching him. You know what I mean? So they would come down and they would sing, and we would do stuff with the camera at the church. And then I'd go pick them up, tell him, mom and them, you know, she could come if she wanted to, took them home. And that's what we used to do. You know, so I was training them for ministry. I'm thinking, they don't belong to my church. They don't even, they, they don't, folks don't even believe, they believe God answered prayer, but they don't believe they can do stuff. And so, but anyway, I used to talk to them and all. So my younger cousin, he was smaller. You know, I forgot how old he was, but he was short for his age. And his mama told me that he had sickle cell anemia. And his growth was stunted. He had sickle cell, but he had something else. And he said his, his growth was stunted. And so I used to talk to him about it. He was at church. He said, yeah, I ain't going to never grow. I'm always be a little shouty and all of that. You know, and like I said, he was real short, for real. And he had sickle cell, too. So I don't know if that's the same. Or, but anyway, he was short and he had sickle cell and he, you know, no cure or whatever. Da, da, da. And so he said, I said, but you want to grow up, don't you? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to grow. Oh, you know what? He said, I want to be normal like everybody else. I said, you know what? I want you normal like everybody else, too. I said, let me ask you something. I said, you believe if I pray for you, God will heal you and cause you to grow? He said, yes, sir, I believe that. I said, okay. I said, let me, wait a minute. I said, you believe? Because I'm going to pray for you right now. He said, okay. He, he, I laid hands on him. In Jesus' name, curse sickle cell and whatever stunted his growth, I wanted it to go. Because the doctor said he should have been growing. You know, I don't know how old he was during that time, but he should have been growing for the doctor said. He wasn't a little boy like a baby, but his size was. I don't know how old he was when he was coming out, but he should have been growing. They should have been a whole lot bigger than he was. And I said, okay, we prayed. I said, you believe God touched you? He said, oh, yeah. I say, he said, because I felt it or whatever he said. I said, okay, so you believe you healed? He said, oh, yeah. I said, let me tell you something. I said, the day going to come when not only you going to grow up, but God going to use you, sickle cell going to be gone, and you're going to be able to look me in the eye, and I'm going to remind you of this day. I said, do you believe what I said? He said, oh, yeah. I said, okay, that's done. And that's what I said. We finished the practice, whatever. I took them back and all, and then we practiced so long, and then the practice had to stop because I got busy. So I couldn't do it no more. Okay. About four weeks ago, one of my longtime cousins in Liberty died. You understand? And so I went and he was there. So me and my brothers was outside and, 
And he came and stood up behind me and said, how you doing, cousin? I said, I'm all right. You know, and he had already done some stuff in the choir. And, you know, he had, he had spoke. He didn't preach, but he sung whatever he did that day. All right. We went outside and we were standing up there side by side. I was looking at him in the eye because I want to remind him how God healed him. And I said, hey, man, you remember when you were little? You wasn't little, but when you were young, remember you thought your, stunt, your growth was going to be stunted? And the doctor told you you wasn't going to grow and you was always going to be like a midget and all of that. I said, you remember that? He said, oh, yeah. I said, you, I said and what did I tell you? He said, you told me I was going to look at you in the eye. One day we're going to be talking somewhere. Man to man, I'm going to be looking at you. I'm going to be tall as you and I'm going to be looking at you in the eye. I said, what's happening right now? He said, um, and he bust out laughing and I hugged him. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, uh-huh. I said, it was done then, but you realize it now because I'm talking about it. I said, you tall as me. We looking at each other in the eye and you're not sick. I say, God, he said, yeah, you sure told me that. And God did it. I say, yeah, because God is the only one that can do it. You understand? And then they had something go on. And then, the, uh, uh, well, right now he's the pastor of a church. Big church. Big brand new church. Right now. Do you understand? But they didn't know how long he was going to live with sickle cell and how short he was going to be and all that. If I showed him to you today, if he stood up here, you would never. He had sickle cell? You would never know it. He's smooth. You understand? He got a deep voice. He sang real good. He preached real good. You understand? And he's my cousin. And he's totally healthy. What happened? I believed when I spoke in a prayer over him, I believed that the sickle cell anemia would die. And I believe, regardless to what the doctor been telling his mama and him, that that thing was broken and he would grow up to be a man. And at this time right now, and he'll tell you, he's tall as me. And we look at each other in the eye. And he's the pastor of a big church, bigger than mine right now. You understand? Hallelujah. It's so wonderful for God to be able to use you if you will allow him to. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything you ask or think according to his power that you let work on the inside. But you got to make a decision. You understand? So I encourage you, let God use you today. All right? This is Shelby Barner from Manawak, Texas. I'm so glad you tuned in. Remember, you got what it takes. It takes what you've got to change the world. God bless you. See you again next time. Bye. Welcome to Flames of Revival Broadcast. This is Shelby Barner. I'm Pastor Full Gospel Tabernacle in Manawak, Texas. And I want to give you a personal invitation. Uh, if you're ever in the Anwak area, you need to come visit. We have our regular service at uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. And uh, on Wednesday is our Bible study night at 7 o'clock. All right? And uh, we pray for the sick. If that's what you need, come on. You are welcome. This is my personal invitation to you. Also, you can tune in the Faith Television Network. I'm on at 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night. And uh, I think I can teach you some things. The name of the broadcast is Flames of Revival, and I'll be looking to see you there. Can I testify?